Let's support our coverage using Blueberry, the community that gives creators the ability to make money, get detailed audience measurements, and host their audio and video. Get 30 days to try out the service using promo code BLUBRRY004. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm doing great. Wonderful. Good, good. Could you move your microphone just a little bit closer? In there you go. Oh, hi there. Ah, now oh. I can hear you. Yeah, great. So uh, I, I have interviewed Brainship. I think this is the third year. We followed the company. Great. Interesting. What's going on this year? Now, I haven't seen this before, so I don't know what you're bringing me. Well, actually, uh, uh, this is my first year here at Brainship, and I I'm really excited that. to uh, show you that this was actually announced right after CES as last a product year. last year. Okay. But what we did di this year was announce that we have a whole sequence of partners that are supporting this from a software and a hardware ecosystem environment. So we announced a, a, about a 10 different partners that have either combined their cameras, like Prophecy, uh, VVDN, that can build new versions of this at low cost, and about six different software companies, AI Labs, B Motion. And was Gear. that all due to the, the connections you made at CES over the years, or you don't know? Well, a lot of it was. We have had uh, an ongoing partnership program because the hardware isn't is invaluable as a software that really does exciting use sure, cases. Sure, of course. Right? So... Uh, we've actually had several partner meetings and signed up new partners on this platform today that we can't announce. But uh, uh, in the last year, we've really had a really exciting set of different use cases that are supported on it from in-cabin, industrial and anomaly and uh, 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 vision uh, detection. Yeah, I know that the uh, infrastructure was quite solid and the science was quite solid into uh, you know what, how you integrate that. So uh, for our listening audience, why don't you tell us a little bit bare bones because it gets complicated, right. uh, what it is that you do, and then we'll talk about the box. Great, great. So uh, BrainChip licenses blueprints for chips. So we're not really in the chip business. These are development enablement kits for software developers to do proof of concepts and evaluate what they're doing. And the reason for that is our technology is very unique. BrainChip is about modeling or inspired by the brain AI uh, architectures. So we don't actually put brains in your chip. We get calls all the time asking about this. But what we do is, is we model the way the brain senses information. Based on our artificial intelligence logarithms. That's correct. So we basically look at the algorithms that the brain uses to detect things, and we try to model that. And the reason we do that is it's so much more efficient than the uh, current strategies for doing AI. It's more brute force, I would call it. Right. Okay. So you're going to actually integrate in the integrated circuits, the chips, your technology, your that's, methodology. That's correct. So okay. our main business model is licensing our blueprints for other manufacturers right. to integrate it with more complex chips. Who makes the most chips in the world? Um, I would not know the answer to that, to tell you the truth. The most chips in the world? Probably uh, China. China, right, yeah. yeah. Which brings up an interesting question, probably for another time, but... You know, the ability to embed in these chips, uh, these chips, yeah, uh, whatever you want. Uh, that's why the, the government, I digress, sure. is a little scared of, uh, I don't know, let's say DJI, the, you know, the drone manufacturer, because they don't know what's in the chips. And uh, I'll talk about that later. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just no, good no, opportunity no. to interject. So one of the things is, you know, we have this big box, but really our technology is, is very small and very power efficient. Most of the AI tips you, you hear about, they're doing one, tens of watts or hundreds of watts or more. Uh, this is a one watt device, and we actually have versions that are fractions of a watt here. Really? And we announced uh, this fall uh, Key to Pico, which is microwatts. So we can use a hearing aid battery and have this run for days and days doing wow. detection algorithms. So it's really applicable to put on wearables, put it in eyeglasses, put it in earbuds, put it in smart watches. Lord and knows they need it for, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm grossly hearing impaired. I have hearing aids. Oh, okay. And they're horrible. I would love to see your technology embedded in those. One of the things we're demonstrating in our, B, our suite is uh, uh, audio denoising algorithm. So okay. when you have a noisy environment like the show here, right. you can pass your audio through the, the machine learning algorithm, and it cleans it up, and it sounds wonderful. And, really? And this is a thing you're going to start seeing with the deregulation of hearing aids yes. by the FDA. Yes. Uh, you know, Apple Pro uh, earbuds have put some of this technology oh, really? in, I did not in know theirs. That. 
And we're seeing, you know, I talked to some manufacturers that have uh, glasses where they put microphones in the front and then AI algorithms in the, sh uh, uh, the uh, uh, arm of the uh, glasses. And it doesn't look like you're wearing hearing aids, but you're getting this much improved audio really? quality. Because most people have minor hearing loss yeah. and they don't want the stigma of wearing hearing aids yeah. but this kind of removes it oh it's an earbud oh it's glasses i'm wearing and now i can hear sure. and engage i, I can see that that's yeah. great so does this technology exist is that something someone could purchase in a hearing aid for example uh it's actually i've seen manufacturers out on the floor doing this we're working with some manufacturers to put more advanced algorithms in the that's current wonderful. ones in there that's yes. wonderful all right let's talk a little bit about your 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 box here i love these mini pcs uh I use these daily. I have about eight or nine of them set up in uh, my studio, and uh, uh, I'm sure this is one on steroids, so <laughs> let's hear about it. What we did was we took a, a, a single board computer from right. NXP, yes, uh, and we've combined that with two of our uh, uh, devices to put three teraops of computing oh, power no in here. And this is a, like a consumer-grade product that you can put in... Uh, 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 a medical device, a medical office, a home, an industrial plant, uh, maybe infrastructure where you're looking and detecting for any anomalies or you're doing security uh, or you're doing kind of uh, interaction with a human to control a device. Now, does this have a typical, uh, I don't know, like a Windows interface? No, this Linux. uses Linux, okay. and it's really not designed to have a keyboard or anything like that, right, right. which you can. It's but processing. It's, it's a processing. Right. So it, the idea is you attach a camera or microphones or sensors to this. It'll take that da streaming data, process it with our neuromorphic computing, and then provide actions that might control equipment automatically. That's quite Or it might signal to the office, hey, we need to send somebody out to take a look at this before there's a failure. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Now, is this available for the consumers right now? Uh, you can buy this on our uh, Shopify, on our website right now today. Oh, I don't know. What's your website? Yeah, uh, brainchip.com. Okay. Yes. So we're really focused on software developers so they can innovate and do this because this form factor is really a development platform, but they can put this um, M.2 card, which is utilized in here, into any one of their own products. So we announced this yesterday at the show. Wow. And then we have You're even a smaller M2? version. M.2. What about four? You're, you're at that point yet? M.2 is the standard form factor here. Yeah. Isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Because there is M4. M4 is actually the microprocessor that's in here from ARM. So we have a ARM microcontroller I inside here. I didn't know that. And then we have our neural processing unit in here with the one and a half tera ops of uh, machine learning. It's pretty interesting. Yes. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So tell us what else does BrainChip do? I know it's not only in here. Well, this is really the products that we've had out in the public and that we're really rolling out for broad. But really what we're doing is innovating in the next generation of right. neural morphic architectures. So... The first wave of, of AI was really based on what we call convolutional neural networks, or CNN. Um, <laughs> and that was really doing vision, machine vision, using it in, in uh, uh, ADAS, which is right. for automated driving. So the second really wave is transformer-based neural networks. And what you know, that's what's used in ChatGPT for large language models. Right. And what transformers do have amazing capabilities to generate new images or text, um, but they're very compute intensive. Uh, at the CES keynote here, uh, Jensen Wang talked about how the computations are going up exponentially. And that's really because of the transformer algorithm has driven that. So what BrainChip is doing is working on the third wave of neural network algorithms called state space models. This is a really recent development right. that uh, has been popularized uh, by uh, Mamba, open source models. It was developed uh, both at BrainChip and at Stanford and at Carnegie Mellon University. I've heard of those. We call our version of state space models TENS, or Temporally Enabled Neural Network Models. It's a whole new language that's coming about, you know, that's for right. techies out there. The beauty of state-based models is we actually have in our booth an LLM, our large language model, that you can talk to. We do the audio denoising, the same technology for the hearing aids. Right. We do the automatic speech recognition, and then we input the text from the ASR into our own LLM that we trained and developed with state space models. And then it'll prompt back and with text to speech talk back to you. So this is a personal assistant that can actually go in an earbud. We're wow. not talking to the cloud here with a supercomputer. Right. We've taken 
basically a chat GPT algorithm and compressed it into a footprint that'll fit on a I board love that. like this. I love that. And then you're not sending your data to the cloud. Right. You don't need a modem or connectivity. It's all and everything you say is private. It's just being talked to this local device here. So there's privacy, security, and low latency for this. Are there devices that are out now that incorporate that? Not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, hearing aid types of devices. Not, not, not the state-based models I'm talking about. What you'll all you'll see today is transformer-based models that take a lot of computing. So probably the smallest devices you're seeing this on right now is thousand-dollar smartphones. What about the, uh, I think it's Vormor, I don't know if you've heard of them, but these no. little pocket translators that will translate a bazillion languages, they'll listen, they'll translate it instantaneously, uh, select the language, just drop it on the table, and it will just, you can have a conversation, I don't know, in Italian, and it will speak to me in English, just no lag. That's no a use case for this technology, but this has actually got knowledge in the language model. So it's not just doing translation, it's actually right. interrogating and then giving you answers that what it's trained on. So an example that we have is you maybe have a, a device at home, like an appliance. Uh, you can say, how do I troubleshoot you? You're not working correctly. And it'll say, oh, well, give me the symptoms. And then you say, oh, it, it, it's making this kind of noise. And you go, oh. Typically, what you'll do is this. So it allows you to, instead of reading a manual or guessing, it'll walk you through how to operate devices or troubleshoot them. Okay. So let's look out, you know, into the broad future. Now, I'm, I'm quasi-familiar with BrainChip. Clearly, you're here because you know a hell of a lot more than <laughs> I do. But my question is this. Uh, the way I interpret what you do, essentially, is you're constantly, and that's the key word, redefining uh, the ability of artificial intelligence, the utilization of that, and you guys are getting smarter every day because of the statistical analysis and database that you've accumulated, and you're building on that, and it's just going up and up and up. Well, that's actually <coughs> a really good segue to kind of what the advantage that we're doing with normal computing. We're really focused on the hardware that executes that. Right. And then a lot of the... Uh, <coughs> The, that intelligent talk about is in the model that's trained that's running on top of the hardware. Right. Now, in the Edge LLM case, we develop not only the ar hardware architecture that runs the model, but also the model itself, and then we also train that model. But so you're we, the engine behind all this. I yes, mean, yes. We're the engine that's executing this. You're, you're the brains of it. Everything else to me, you know, the chip's going to do what it's supposed to do. That's why we're called brain chip. Yeah. <laughs> BrainChip is a great story. We had a, a neural scientist, uh, and he paired up with a chip designer. Yeah. So one guy was the brain, the other guy was the chip. Brain chip. So, but still, essentially, you're you're in, you're learning more and more every day. Well, the, the model basically ha the current AI takes batches of data and goes through a, a, a data center and does computations on it to retrain it constantly. So what that means is. It has to get data sent from all the devices into a cloud computer, batch it together, and retrain it. Neuromorphics can do edge training, so we can personalize this model. You can have this device learning and then learning from your interactions without sending data back to the cloud. That's a really unique advantage of neuromorphic computing. Privacy? Privacy, right. Where do you see this five years from now? I see this embedded in every product and making our lives easier. And I think a lot of the issues about, about privacy and security will be addressed because people don't want all of their data sent to the cloud, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and then used. You know, one of the examples I have for these edge LLMs is corporations. They'll put these devices in their corporation. Do they want all the private conversations oh, in their yeah. company being sent to the cloud to be trained for a better AI model that's sold to their competitor? Yeah. No, they want to basically own their data, just Absolutely. like they want to. That's have the intellectual property. I mean, it's that's right. But intellectual property is also the process and the language that's used inside the corporation. And when edge LLMs are used in corporations, companies are going to have to wrestle with the idea: Do I want to use a cloud provider and provide them all of my voice data for him to train it and resell that, or do I train my own models? It's interesting because when the cloud came out, it was it was the best thing since orange it's juice. It's still great. It's it still is. wonderful. It is. But when you enter in the privacy and yes now yes. but but the technology is moving so fast it's hard to go and address some of these issues so i think your question was what's going to happen in five years i think 
those questions are going to be wrestled with by companies, and they're going to want to push these algorithms closer to the edge, where the data stays within the physical confines of their organization, but they get all the advantages that we're seeing today with things like ChatGPT. That's Chat very GPT. good. I've talked to hundreds of people about this, and you, you were one of the few guys that were able to articulate that that movement from from yeah. now to next yeah. year, it, it, pretty interesting. Well, we're we're trying to skate where we think the puck is going, and yeah, we yeah. know the puck is going that when it's broadly adopted, these questions can't be addressed with agreements or licenses sure. or promises. Right. It's going to be exactly how is it structured, how does it work? Yeah. Very interesting, Steve. I, I could keep you here all day. Thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm just, here all day for I'm you. I'm blow, sorry. I'm blown away <laughs> by it. Really, it's it's amazing to me. Uh, how you do it, and, and the the rap, the, the the growth has been so rapid with your company. Oh, you know, we're, I mean, it's unbelievable. We're super excited. We we yeah. showed some demos that were not public to some partners, and they had exactly that reaction to us. No, I can see why. And, and we signed up a couple companies to partner. I can't even talk about the companies, sure. but. They're setting up a university corp uh, a program within their corporation oh so that they God. can innovate and train their engineers to how to think outside the box and apply these technologies to the next generation Steve, products. Steve, I, I'm thrilled that you joined us today. Uh, look, at, folks, I, I, you know how many interviews I do a day and how many companies we've talked to over the years. This is one of the ones you want to keep an eye on because uh, they're always accessible. They always answer all the questions, but... Uh, the technology is so innovative, so creative, and so leading, bleeding edge that you, I, you know you, you almost can't keep up with it. So if someone were to go to brainchip.com, that would give them a good background, basic background of what you guys do. That's right. We'll talk about what we call event-based computing. The key advantage is conventional AI processes every data sample, whether there's any information or not. Right. Neuromorphic computing is looking for... Uh, information within the spar sparse information into a lot of garbage, pulling that out with spiking networks and propagating that through, and we can get uh, 10x power reductions. If 10% of the data is valid, yeah, yeah. And we're only calculating 10% of the data, that means we're 10 times more efficient. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. you so much, I too. I thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you. I love and it. I hope I see you uh, again soon. We certainly will. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. The Tech Podcast Network CES 2025 coverage is executive produced by Adam Barker. Technical director is Kirk Corliss. Associate producers are Nancy Ertz, Tracy Ingram, Xerxes Goddard, Brandy Jackson, and Aviva Cram. Voiceover by Aaron Hurst. Our hosts are Marlo Anderson, Don Bain, and Scott Ertz. Studio and equipment are provided by Plunkett's Productions. The TPN Studio Executive is Todd Cochran. This has been a Tech Podcast Network production, copyright 2025.